live. Okay. We are live now. It's 551. Good evening. Heidi Oropesa here with Florida You Judge. And we are at six o'clock. Um, I'm going to be joined, who is already here on uh, live with me, A. Wellington Barlow, the creator, along with other developers that he got to create this amazing technology called ESAS, which is an abbreviation for the acronym for equity in sentencing analysis. I always have to like take a <laughs> couple of seconds to remember because it's long. <laughs> but um, so it's 551. We, I went, we always go live um, a couple of minutes before, not a couple, but uh, a good 10 at least minutes before the actual start time of the presentation, the broadcast in order to um, hopefully have people begin to tune in as they see the live notice go on. Um, oh, wait, I'm getting a call. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and send you the link right now. We're just here. We are live just FYI. So I'm going to send you the link now. Um, so you can come on. Okay. All right. Very well. Yep. So my co-host, Nina Hayden, which I, I she's amazing. She's going to come on. She's just going to kind of co-pilot. And I'm going to pretty much stay quiet for the majority of the presentation. We want to hear from you, sir, this evening. And we want the public, particularly those persons in Florida, inmates, loved ones of inmates, persons currently seeking the, uh, awaiting the disposition of their case. I want them to know that about this amazing software that was created in order to safeguard against unjust or unequal sentences so with that good evening and thank you and how are you sir this evening i'm blessing yourself and thanks i, I really appreciate you having me on always you know this was something i think a divine uh, orchestration the meeting between us both so um you're doing a you're doing good work and so i like to when i see good work being done i like to come in and try to help assist the furtherance of that good work so um whatever i can do to assist you this is a good thing i am here to do whatever i can to serve you sir in serving um the public and the a uh, cause of justice that's what we're about and me and you we're believers we believe in um, right. we believe in god and god is one of his attributes is justice that's what and he he loves justice because he is justice. Exactly. Micah 6 and 8. Right. That is a great verse. In fact, I, re I re um, quoted that today. Walk humbly, do mercy, and what's the yeah. other one? What What does the Lord require of you but to do justly, Amen. Walk hum yeah, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? That's right. That's right. So... We it's 554 now. Uh, we're, you're going to be taking Collins. This is wonderful. Let yes. me share. I'm going to be sharing the link with a community activist so that she can advise. Hold on a second. Here we go. Her community about so that they can tune in. And I'm going to mute myself just real briefly so that uh, I'm not heard now when. Because it's gonna, there's gonna echo. Because I'm gonna hit the link, open up the link of the live right now. Okay.
Okay, so Nina's joining us. We're going to, like I advised um, Mr. Barlow, you're going to be taking Collins this evening uh, during the one hour at least. Hopefully if we go have to go over because it's really good and people are calling in and they're uh, interested in, in, in calling in and, and finding out about the system, we can go in a little past an hour. Um, okay. So, but the call-in number will be is 813-221-9700. And I'm just waiting for Nina Hayden, attorney Nina Nina Hayden, to jump on. Again, Haiti Oropesa with Florida U Judge. We're a couple of minutes away from the start of today's broadcast at 6 o'clock. We have A. Wellington Barlow. He's going to be taking call-ins today during the one-hour presentation, 6 to 7. The call-in number is 813-221-97. And he has a fascinating software that he, along with two other um, IT developers, um, came up with on the heels of a series of reports by Herald Tribune out in the Sarasota Manatee area called Bias from the Bench. Mr. Barlow came up with an idea of what if there was a software that can do a comparison between um, similarly situated uh, defendants that uh, are awaiting uh, sentencing. Yes. Okay, let me send it to you one more time, okay? Okay, so I need a moment here to We're two minutes away. It's 5.58. Please join us and tell your friends and tell others. Uh, this We're going to be discussing an amazing software, which was created in order to safeguard against racial disparity in sentencing. Mr. Barlow, who was the um, developer in part, along with some partners, is going to be answering questions, and he's going to be doing a, a live promo of the actual software. 813-221-9700 is the call-in number. So I see that uh, Michelle Williams, community activist Michelle Williams, is tuning in. Um, hi, Michelle. How are you? Thank you. I appreciate We appreciate you. I, we know that you're interested in justice for, um, for your community. And so the call-in number is 813-221-9700. Thanks for tuning in, Michelle. <coughs> All right. Hi, Nina. How are you? Look at that. I like your background. Thank you. I do, too. <laughs> Attorney Barlow, how are you? I'm glad to yourself. Oh, awesome. It's so good to be. I feel privileged, honestly, to be on here with you. Oh, no, no. I'm the one that's <laughs> Very It's six o'clock. Very it's excited about what you've got. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to begin without further ado. Thank you for uh, joining us, um, Florida, Floridians, the yes. Tampa Bay area, <laughs> and all of Florida, really, because your software is. Um, a software that can be used throughout the state, right? That's correct. You're going to have people tuning in should from all over the state because it's the software is being used everywhere all over the state of Florida. Right. And, and I, invited, so, I invited all of our clients. So. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Okay, great. So if you want, Nina, you could, or maybe not, I don't know. I don't want you to get like something happen, like, glitchy that will make you drop off, but we have 17 um, viewers currently. Just go ahead and share for those of you who are following it. Please tell your family, loved ones, everyone that is interested in criminal justice reform. This is something major. Um, I was had the opportunity to meet 
of Mr. Wellington Barlow. It was mm-hmm. what it was in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Was it was it, when was the Criminal Justice Summit out here in Tampa? 18. It was around. Okay, there you go. So, um, I have uh, I had the criminal defense attorney Robert Eckerd who introduced me. He discussed the article that was a write up in the Florida Bar News about mm-hmm. your system. He was very interested. Briefly mentioned it to me, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. So when the summit was held out here in Tampa, I called you just out of you know I I think it was a God thing. I, you know, it, every, it all the planets aligned. Okay, so yeah. it was on my mind. That is something that's very important. We know Nina's a criminal or, or has practiced criminal defense, and she we, she years. understands very well the yes. s- score sheet. Yes, and minimum mandatories also. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Uh, Yes. which are harsh. So mm-hmm. I reached out to you and tell us what happened after that. You just happened to be here. I thought you would be in Jacksonville. That's where you primarily practice and reside. And you Correct. happened to, to, to have been here in Tampa. So I said, hey, maybe we can get some Cuban food tomorrow and you can demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was in Tampa for the first and only um, Florida Bar Criminal Justice Summit which was at the uh, Hilton at the airport. And uh, you called to discuss ESAS with me. You thought I was in Jacksonville, but I was actually in Tampa near you. And so uh, when we realized that, we uh, wound up getting together the next day and uh, I demoed it for you at a nice Cuban restaurant that I, every time I go back to Tampa, I frequent that restaurant, by the way. Awesome. It's good stuff. It's good food. Good yeah. stuff. So, but tell us. So we sat and had some good Cuban cuisine and then you, you're a man after my own heart, I got to tell you, because you had your laptop ready, you're, you're technologically savvy. So we were eating and you opened up your laptop and you started showing me a demo. So tell us about that. Exactly. Well, what I, really what this software does is it's real simple. Uh, it's a complex system, but it's real simple to operate. And the principle is that uh, it can show judges and prosecutors and defense attorneys what other sentences have been handed down for similarly situated arrests. Uh, so if a person has been arrested for burglary, their first offense, they get so many points for that. And so everybody who's ever had a first time burglary who's been sentenced since October 1st of 1998 through right now, June 30th of 2019. So you're talking about 2.2 million records that this system can go through. And so if a judge is getting ready to sentence somebody on the first offense, burglary, he can look back or she can look back and they can see what sentences they've given over the years, what sentences their colleagues have given over the years. We also have an application that you can look at every sentence from every court in every circuit in the state if you want to have that uh, application as well. And so it's so powerful because what it does is before you had this, you were just kind of guessing at what you were doing. You really didn't know what you were doing. Well, now you're going to know what you're doing before you do it if you use the system. And so what it is, is it brings a level of knowledge and information to you that you never had before. And like the public defender in, uh, we have five PD offices using it right now. And the one in Tampa, uh, Julie Ho, she said, there's no way we're going to go back to being blind because now we see what we're going to do before we do it. And the utility of it is what judges do is when they see that a prosecutor sometimes is offering too much, like for instance, we just helped the guy last week, prosecutor was trying to give this kid um, 10 years in prison. Well, they ran the data. We ran the data for them. Nobody had ever received 10 years in that jurisdiction for that maximum was five. But I also went further. They didn't pay uh, for a statewide search, but I ran a statewide search just because I wanted to see myself. Nobody in any of the 20 circuits had ever received 10 years for that. And when the judge saw that, the judge gave the person a uh, community uh, based treatment <laughs> by probation that came from ten, a 10 year offer down to that because the judge saw that the prosecutor ignorantly was about to mislead the judge to give a sentence that would have been disparate in relation to other sentences that had been handed down. Okay, now, you know what? I, I, I'm oh, sorry, Nina. I'm sorry. Ahead, Nina. We, we, we collide. But I'll, I promise I'll be quick and then you can jump in. and do, Sounds and good. Me. No, it's yeah. fine. Go for it. Um. Listen, I want to give props to the public defender Julian Holt out of the 13th Circuit. There's 20 public defenders in the whole state, okay? And they know or should know because if not, they somebody needs to challenge a public defender if they don't know that there's disparate sentencing that has gone on for a long time. 
Yeah. Um, but now there's this this software that comes out, and um, Miss Hole is the second one in the state out of the 20 that jumps on and says, absolutely, we're going to do this. This is a good thing. I am saddened that um, I worked for Miss Holt in uh, 2000. Then I went and I and I uh, worked with uh, public defender Bob Dillinger. He is retiring soon to be serving as the head of that office is the um, public defender elect Sarah Molo. So I'm, I'm saddened that the Sixth Circuit has not adopted your software. There's five. From my recollection, it's uh, Blaze Tetris. I hope I'm pronouncing his name. Blaise Carlos Vargas. Yeah, Tetris. It, it's uh, right. It's the uh, 18th Circuit, the 11th Circuit, which is Miami, the 4th Circuit, which is Jacksonville, the 13th Circuit, which is Tampa, and we just signed up the 20th Circuit, which is Fort Myers. Okay, so how many oh, total now? Five. Okay, okay so can you say their names? I'd like to, uh, the public to know who these the, the public servants defender, are. Um, yeah, Charlie Colfer is PD4 in Jacksonville, and Blaze Tredis is PD18 in uh, uh, Titusville area. Um, Carlos Martinez, 11 in uh, Miami, and uh, Julie Holt in the 13th circuit in uh, Tampa. And I can't think of the PD's name in uh, Fort Myers. We just signed them up a few weeks ago. So we have five offices of the 20, which is pretty good, but we, we need all of them. And we there do. are no ROCC offices um, signed up. And I just wanna say this right here for the public. I offered all of them a free 30 day trial. So all of them could have used it for 30 days. All 20 PDs, all five regions of the ROCC offices for free for 30 days and only a handful of them uh, took it up and uh, but it, but it is what it is let you me, know, let me, six, it's, oh sorry i sorry sorry nina go, go let go. me ask you this question because some people may be viewing i mean i have this on my facebook page i want to know i this is i'm very passionate about this and haiti and i i've shared this on my facebook page because i want the public to understand i practiced many years in the criminal justice system and i have seen the disparity among the sentencing, whether it's across racial lines or social economic lines, this is so important. I really feel very passionate and I commend you, Barlow. I want you for, just to tell the viewers how you came about the system of what, what happened that said to, that, that, that um, pricked your spirit to say, Hey, look, that, that something needs to change. And then not only did you just, hear that something needs to change. You actually did something. And <clears throat> this is so important to me. We can do, we can talk, we can say a lot of things, but actually doing something that has a major impact and an effect on the state of Florida as a whole is a very powerful thing. So can you please share with us that? Yeah, uh, first of all, I wanna give some props to two a gentleman that uh, really uh, helped me out in this. God gave me an idea in December of uh, 2016. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But then I met two guys in 2017, uh, Buster Bragg, he's an excellent tech and uh, he's our CTO and a gentleman by the name of uh, Chris Parker, he's our CFO. And Chris introduced me to Buster and I sat down with him and told him, you know, how to do it. And, um, you know, he, he he's the brains behind everything. Mm -hmm. I had, a, God gave me an idea and then put me in touch with two beautiful people, intelligent people. That's and how it works. They brought it, <laughs> they brought it together, you know. But yeah. what happened, I'm glad you asked that question because what happened was, I've been practicing law since uh, 1985. I interned in the state attorney office, prosecuting, came back, worked in the PD's office mm -hmm. after graduating from the University of Florida College of Law in December of, of uh, 85. And what happened was I was watching disparity the whole time, but, but the Stuff hit the fan in 2010 when I had a young African-American male who had just graduated from high school and he picks up. He really picked up two uh, date rape charges. We go to trial on one, win everything. He's facing life plus five years, mm -hmm. a jury of five women and one man, four white women, one black woman and one white man found a black boy not guilty of raping a white girl. Well, that enraged the prosecutor so much that she added a burglary count to his next charge, which she never even filed. You know, four wow. or five months later, she has a birthday card. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get life out of him. Well, I didn't like that. And I you know, had demanded a speedy trial. She didn't like that. And so we go to trial and he's facing life plus 15 years. 
And the judge finds him not. Now, the allegations are he broke into my apartment and then he raped me. But he didn't because he was dating the girl's roommate and the girl wanted to have sex with him. We had testimony about all that. Well, anyway, jury finds him not guilty of the burglary, which I'm glad because that was a life offense. And that's what she wanted. Well, he is facing now zero um, um, eight years to 15 years, eight years minimum, 15 years maximum, because that was a level eight offense, second degree felony, carrying up to 15 years in prison. Well, she asked for the maximum. Well, this kid had never been arrested before, had never had any kind of problems, was a good student, had two offers to play football, full ride scholarships, getting ready to go to college. She asked the judge to give him 15 years, which is the maximum. And like I told the judge in sentencing, even if he did what she claimed he did, which he didn't, he doesn't deserve 15 years. I've been practicing law 30 some years, well, 20 some years at that point, And I knew that that was too much time. Here's the problem. Number one, I had a gr an aggressive prosecutor. Number two, I had a judge who had only been on the bench for 18 months before he got on the bench, which was by election, which is no problem. But he had never handled any criminal cases whatsoever, not even a traffic citation to my knowledge. So he gets on a circuit court bench. He's, with all due respect, ignorant of how things work. And he's culture shocked as well with respect to the kind of people that he's dealing with. He doesn't understand how to handle this case. Judges normally, as you know, defer to the discretion of the prosecutor. I tried to explain to the judge, look, that's too much time. You might not understand that, but I do. That's too much time. Well, the judge gave him what she asked for, which is 15 years. That was January. The trial was in October of 2010. The, the sentencing was uh, January 6 of 2011. Well, the Sarasota Herald Tribune comes out with this groundbreaking two year study in December of 2016. The new the, a news. Uh, I'm sorry, a television station called me up to comment on it. I hadn't seen it yet. So they sent me the link. I read it and it just hit me in the heart because of what had happened to this young man. And so I go in and do an interview with them. As soon as I come home, I'm like, OK, what do you do with this? Now, they've proven statistically that what we've already known. But what do you do with this? So within 24 hours, God gave right. me the idea. I called it a codification of common sense. And mm. it basically served as for this data right here. Mm -hmm. And this is what I did. Once Buster created it, the first search I ran was the case I just told you about. And this is what I found. I found a oh, man wow. who had the same charge as my client, went to trial and lost in December. The, the month after our trial, he was sentenced the end of December, no, be, the beginning of December. He was sentenced in December. My client was sentenced a month later they had the same charge the same 154 points both of them facing eight years to 15 years but here's the difference that judge had been on the bench for a long time had handled right. civil cases mm -hmm. i'm quite sure the attorney asked for the maximum but he knew better so mm -hmm. he gave the guy the bottom which was 7.9 years one month later two or three doors down in the same courtroom courthouse my client gets 15 years had i had this system i could have shown my judge that sentence from the month before, and I'm telling you, he would not have given my, I know him. He's not a racist. He's not prejudiced. A lot of this stuff happens with implicit bias. He would have given my client the same thing that everybody in that courtroom, in that courthouse respected that other judge. He would have given my client probably 7.9 years, but he gave him 15 years. Now, here's the good news. This system helped my client get out last year. This very system right here helped right. him get out. So that. that that's how it. That's how I came about the uh, the idea of it. Oh my goodness! Can you talk a little bit about implicit bias and how important that is now in the movement of criminal justice reform? There's a lot of it, it, it's critical. That are, okay, could you? It's critical. Talk about it's that crucial. See what happens is a lot of people don't really understand how implicit bias works, but it's just as dangerous as explicit bias. It's it's very dangerous because the results are the same. But implicit bias works like this. A lot of times a judge, when a judge can identify with, uh, let's say it's a white judge, he can identify with a young white male. Well, this could be my son. This could be my grandson. This could be my daughter. This could be, you know, my, my grandmother. This could be my mother. This could be my father. And so what they'll do is they will give them a break, a break that they don't have to give them. That's called mercy. You know, in the Bible, you know, it's called mitigation in law. So the judge will give them a break. OK, well, but when it's somebody that they cannot readily identify with, they won't give them a break. They'll just give them the CPC code. But what they don't understand is that's discriminatory because you didn't give everybody the same break 
who are similarly situated. Correct. That's the point of implicit bias. And so they think that they haven't mm -hmm. done anything wrong when in reality you have because you didn't treat both of those people the same way. You did not equitably give the same, right. Right. The same people who are similar. That's how implicit. So there's no different than a racist just sitting on the bench saying, I'm going to get everybody that I can who doesn't look like me. An implicitly biased judge is going to do the same thing ignorantly, not knowing that he's doing the same thing that a racist judge is doing. I, I think, um, Attorney Barlow, what, what folks need to understand is judges need to be informed. In other words, they, right. need, they need the knowledge the information that we have as attorneys where, where we are litigating and we are talking about sentencing, we inform, we're actually responsible. People think judges know everything, but actually. <laughs> let, 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 I got a, I have a PowerPoint that I want okay. to go to. Yes. And I think it'll answer a lot of questions and everything. And then I'm going to do a demo and I want to take some calls from your audience if Perfect. that's possible. 813-221-9700 and you, it's six, 17. And so we're doing this live. You have an opportunity to call in. If you have someone that is incarcerated awaiting the disposition, the outcome of their case, and the state, the government, the state attorney is looking for prison, this is important and vi very vital that you pay attention to this. Everyone, every inmate in the state that's awaiting a disposition on their criminal case needs to know about this. So that they can tell their attorney, whether it be a public defender or a private attorney, so that they run a report to see if there may be disparate uh, sentencing that is co being contemplated by the state attorney. So call in, please share. This is very important. If it if you don't have someone right now awaiting, facing a criminal charge, awaiting incarcerated or out of custody, it doesn't matter. But a case where the state attorney is seeking prison time, this is in very important that the word gets out about this system. Uh, be, and because you know what? They might not right now be awaiting it, but God forbid in the future, if you yourself or someone that you love finds themselves caught up in the criminal justice system, this is very important. Agreed. Yep. So are you ready for the PowerPoint now? I am. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, put that up. And there you go. Show it's the up. public. Yes. Yep, it is. Can you so see it? I can. I can see that. We can all see it. The the, the public. Oh, yes, I can see it. Yep. You can? And, yes, we can. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. So the, Flo the Florida's Constitution, Article 1, uh, Declaration of Rights, Section 2, Basic Rights. All natural persons, female and male alike, are equal before the law and have inalienable rights, among which are the right to enjoy and defend life, liberty, and to pursue happiness. No person shall be deprived of any right because of race, religion, national origin, or physical disability. The core problems with disparate sentencing are the statewide disparity in criminal sentencing. That's been statistically proven by the uh, Sarasota Herald Tribune. Statistically proven disparate sentencing with disproportional impacts pertaining to race, unconstitutional violation of citizens' equal protection rights, erosion of public trust, and therefore confidence in the judicial system. This is very, very important here because what people don't understand is people get arrested, get a bond, knowing that they're facing 5, 15, 20 years, but they'll still come back to court because they have an implicit belief that they're going to be treated fairly. But if this foolishness keeps going on that we're seeing, people are not going to go to court. So if it continues, it was going to destroy the rule of law as we know it. And that's what anarchists want. And it'll lead to ultimate chaos. The facts uh, with respect to disparate sentencing, the Herald Tribune's groundbreaking investigation provides statistical proof that disparate sentencing is a reality across Florida. The imperative question now is, what is the remedy? And that's what ESAS is. It's not about studying something. It's a remedy. It's a solution to a real problem. Finally, what can and should be done to eliminate such inequitable and unconstitutional treatment of the criminally accused? Look back at the case I just kind of mentioned a few minutes ago, the case that inspired ESAS. This is an actual case that I experienced of uh, implicit bias and disparate treatment or inequitable sentencing in the state of Florida. Sexual battery 
5A, which we're going to look that up in a few minutes. That's a, a second degree felony carrying up to 15 years. A person 18 years of age or older who commits a sexual battery upon a person 12 years of age or older, but younger than 18 years of age without that person's consent and in the process does not use physical force and violence likely to cause serious personal injury commits a felony of the second degree. In the sentencing phase, this is my client's background, 18-year-old African-American male, no prior criminal history, graduated from high school prior to his arrest, had four football scholarships, uh, rides to two different colleges. The criminal penalty uh, punishment code score was 154. The sentence range was eight years minimum to 15 years maximum. And I just want to pause here for a second because when you look at number five, the score of 154 points, the reason that they put points on people on charges is because they were trying to objectify the charges so that you can try to remove some of the emotions out of sentencing people. And so if two people have 154 points, one shouldn't be getting a sentence that's way down on the bottom and the other one shouldn't be getting a sentence that's way on the top. Because no matter how you inflicted uh, injury in this particular case, a certain number of points for vaginal uh, rape, it's a certain, the same number of points, that's 80. For vaginal, same number of points, that's 80. For anal, same number of points, that's 80. For oral. So the points is what's supposed to objectify the data and the crime so that a judge can blindly look at a defendant, not as a black person or a white person, but as a, a criminally accused person. So here's an example. This is the case that I found after we uh, fired up the system the first time. This, this person was sentenced December 2nd, 2010, had no prior criminal history. These are the, the dynamics of his case, uh, his arrest date, second degree felony, just like my client. Wait, wait, level wait. Eight. Are, are you showing, because are, are you seeing the, I'm not, I'm, okay, I'm still in the login seeing, thing. Oh, yeah. I have the PowerPoint up. Oh, you okay, have gotcha, gotcha. Through. Okay, so yeah. you haven't done, you haven't logged in yet to show a demo of the actual database software, right? Right, but okay. I'm showing a, I'm showing a, a PowerPoint. Uh, can you get that up? No, I'm not seeing that. That's the thing. Could, could you? Could, okay, okay, let me so back you, out of the go ahead and go, go into the share option from your end. You can to see if they, it'll come up. Okay. What, what I have is the actual software. I tell you what. Let Let's do this right here. Let me um. See if I can get. Uh, I tell you what. Let's I, do I removed it. I removed. No, 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 no. Let's go back. I'll just do a demo now. I'll do a demo now. Do you see the okay. screen now? I can. Okay. Let's do a let's demo do of the that. actual uh, software. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Got the login first. See if we can get logged in. Oh, I, I see it now. I put an extra extra letter on my name. A Barlow, not A W. Okay, that should do it. Okay, so do you see that screen? Yes, sir. Okay, yep. so now, so now, uh, what do you see on your screen? So right now we're in the uh, sentence search criteria. Equity I, I see now. There's a delay. I see it now. I have yeah, a phone up. There's a delay on it. I see it now. So I'll I'll wait for you to get caught up with me before I go forward. Yeah, there's a delay. There's a broadcast delay. Okay, so don't look at the broadcast because there is a delay. So whatever you're doing now, we don't have to wait to catch up to the delay. Just do your thing, and then it'll catch up on its own. Okay. Because what All right. we're, I'm telling you what we're seeing now, that's what it in a couple of however what the time I got is it. for okay. I got it. Yeah, it's a it's a substantial delay as a matter of fact. So what we have here is this is the system. Once you log in, you have statute numbers, you have points range, you have a, you can search by a judge's last name, just put in the lap the first three characters of the last name. You have the offense date range, October first, nineteen ninety eight, through right now, June thirtieth. 
2019. We get a, a upload once a year. They release the data. Department of uh, Corrections releases it once a year on a fiscal basis. And so that's the offense date range, the sentence date range, which I'm going to modify in a minute. You have on my system, I have access to every circuit in the state of Florida. So I can just run a, a 794 on every in every circuit, in every county, in every circuit, and see what the data is. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I'm just going to run a search for Duval County because that's where my client's case was that I was just telling you all about. So I got Duval County checked here. I'm going to put uh, 794 there, 011 there, and I'm going to limit the data. I only want to do apple and apple and orange to orange comparisons. So I'm going to use the same number of points in both boxes 154 so i can get just the cases that i want but i'm going to come over here my client remember he got sentenced in january of 2011 so i want to go back to december of 2000 december 31st of 2010 because that's where i would have been had i had this system when i was arguing for my client to get a fair sentence in january of 2011 so i'm gonna go back that's a good thing about this so i'm only gonna pull data that was in existence before my client got sentenced and so what's gonna come up is wait a minute 16 cases come up you'll see those in a minute you got a delay on yours and you'll see the statutes, which I'm going to modify because I only want to look at 794.0115. So I'm taking out everything but that. So we have an apple and an apple, 794.0115, statute description, sexual battery, defense level eight, the points 154. Now the sentence says this is a sentence box right here. I'm going to come back to it in a minute. These are the years that the person got. This is the actual type of sentence. SP is uh, state prison. CJ is county jail. CC is community control. And you won't see it here, but PB is probation. These are the numbers of years that the person got sentenced to. This is the minimum that they were facing, 7.9 years, everybody. This is the maximum they were facing, 15 years, because it's a second degree felony. This is the disposition type pleas and trials. We're going to look at the trials only in a minute. This is the race of the defendant, the sex of the defendant, the county of the case. I'm going to come over here. This is the actual case number here. I can click this and show you some more information. I'll do that in a few minutes. This is the defendant's last name, first name, date of birth, offense date, the sentencing date here. If there's a minimum mandatory sentence, it will go here or if the person was facing and here are the judge's names over here. Now I put the judge's names all the way over there out of the way because I don't want to necessarily attack any judge. This is not about a judge. This is about showing how this system can work for everybody, judges included. Judges who really understand it, they love it because they understand that it can help them not excessively sentence somebody I mean, think about it for a second. This system can help a judge. Some of these judges are going to be 10, 15, 20 years. They can't remember all of the sentences they give out. So this system can help a person, a judge, not give somebody probation on one case and three years later give somebody 10 years in prison. That doesn't make them look too good. So a system like this can protect the judge from that. So I'm going to come over here and sort these out. Now, what you're going to see here is Everybody is similarly situated, yet their sentences are different. I'm going to sort this one right here, too. So this person right here is facing 15 years, but they get six months in jail, in county jail. This person is facing up to 15 years. They get one year in the county jail. This person is facing 15 years, but get one year community control. As you can see, these people are similarly situated, yet they're being treated differently. So one person on the low end gets six months county jail. Another person gets 10 years in prison for the same offense, same offense. Now what I'm going to do is since I had a trial, I'm going to come and compare apples and apples and oranges and oranges. So I'm going to remove all the plea bargains, look at only the trials. So now we can see in the fourth judicial circuit, which is Duval County only, Duval County has three, three, uh, the fourth circuit, excuse me, has three counties, 
Clay County, Duval, and Nassau. Since my client was tried in Duval, I only want to look at the cases in Duval. So here, there are three trials from October 1st, 1998 through uh, December 31st of 2010 of people who were arrested for sexual battery 794.0115, who had the level eight offense, 154 points, they were facing state prison, and here are their sentences. So this is the situation that my client was in before he was sentenced in January of 2011. As you can see, the maximum sentence that was given out was eight years. Nobody before my client was given 15 years, got 15 years in Duval County, for 794.0115, level eight with 154 points. So it was just like I told that judge. I just didn't have the system. Had I had this and showed this to that judge, my, I'm quite sure my client would never have gotten 15 years. Here's the case that, that I was trying to show you all right here. This is the man who went to trial the month before my client did. He had um, 794, second degree felony, level eight. Um, victim injury, 80 points. Now I want to show you this right here. This says sexual penetration, 80 points. Watch this. That's 80 points. If a person sexually molests a person in three orifices, mouth, anus, and vagina, that's 80 points times three. In other words, what we can do sometimes is get emotional when they're raped in a certain area. Well, the law says there's no difference between the mouth and the anus. There's no difference. I hate to be graphic like that, but we have well, to get it is what it is. From court. It is what it is. I have to explain to you. But see what happens sometimes a prosecutor will get upset. Well, you know, he raped them in the mouth. He raped them in the anus. That's terrible. No, the, the, the CPC code gives 80 points for each one. Now, I'm going to show you how prosecutors can manipulate cases. I've seen this recently. Let's say a person, they really want to give them a break. They're accused of penetrating a person's vaginal area or anus or mouth. Well, the state attorney will give them 40 points for sexual contact rather than 80 yeah. points for sexual yeah, penetration. Points. That's, right. how you, that's how you can manipulate the points right. to give a person a break that you don't want, that you don't want to go to prison. Mm -hmm. I've seen that many a time. Let me, you know? let me, let me for a moment and then, then continue. This is important. Every person, especially persons that are the continual victims of unequal sentences, okay, and we're talking about black people, you need to pay attention. This is available. This man has taken the time to respond to what he has seen as an attorney. We have seen it as attorneys, and we, we didn't have a mechanism, something that, a software that could combat this. And this has been the... I, listen, I don't want you to get off track, but I do want to say this. I am tired of pandering and, and, and for politicians, people in office are seeking office saying they want criminal justice reform, but there, it's just a lot of talky-talky, okay? I want to, listen, in District 19, the only viable candidate right now is Daryl Roussan. However, I am interested in knowing from Daryl Roussan why is he not getting on board or pushing this up in Tallahassee? I want to know from lawmakers. This is available. There's no other system like it. I just spoke to or sent a written message on social media to Chris Browse, the incoming House Speaker, who, legis who proposed, sponsored a bill to, for the creation of a criminal justice database in 2018, and it's still not has not been created. I asked him and he said that it's it's in the works and it should be available at the beginning of 2021. And I'm going to be interested in knowing if that criminal justice database has the same feature that can easily do a comparison between what the government in this state is seeking on I know that this is primary this is generally to eliminate bias of all sorts. Okay, but if you're a minority, this and and the government is seeking prison because the score sheet or a minimum mandatory mandate or calls for incarceration, you need. If I had a loved one, if it was me, I need to run a report. If the government is seeking prison, please call in eight one three two two one ninety seven hundred. He is here to answer these very important questions, and I would like for you to speak to as to to 
the lawmakers that are saying that there's something coming down the pike, it's in the mail, but we we have nothing yet. And and yeah. and in the interim, there are black men, minorities, Latin men that are maybe receiving possibly, and we we believe that that's happening. If there's one person that can be spared from having the imposition of an unequal sentence, this is worth it. I am on the horn now with you live. I'm going to take of my time, my free time, pro bono, to bring attention, focus to this. Speak to this. Let, let, let me Speak say this. Right, let me say this right here. Um, I, I had a nice conversation with uh, Senator Roussan yesterday. And uh, even though we didn't talk about this particularly, I, you know, uh, we had a great conversation. We're going to follow up and I will speak to him about it. And I'm quite sure he's amenable to it. I heard his presentation of the night. So I think he, he'll be on board with this. Right. I don't think that's the issue. I also talked with uh, Senator um, Audrey Gibson today and yesterday. She's already she's always been on board with it. Um, it's just a matter of uh, getting it before the right people. Let me just say this right here. Um, I'm very familiar with the uh, data collection law. It will not do this. That's why I did this. Listen, I went to Tallahassee with this when it was on paper, I was gonna give it to them. I was gonna give this whole system to the state. I was gonna sit down with the program. I told them, I made a presentation in the legislative session. It's on record. I, I read the codification of common sense in March, I think it was of 2017, a month, three months after God gave me the idea, I told them I would give it to them. The problem was I was nobody to them. They didn't know who I was, so they didn't take me seriously. So I had two mm -hmm. options, I could forget yeah. about it. I mm -hmm. could forget about it. Or I can mm -hmm. come back to Jacksonville and create the program. Well, I know how much is needed. So I, I came back to Jacksonville. But I really wanted to give it to the state so everybody could have it. Prosecutors, wow. judges. Wow. Yeah, prosecutors, <laughs> judges. That's that's amazing. Amazing. That's how I'm serious. But they made me come back and create a, I had to create a corporation, had to invest money, had to get it mm -hmm. trademarked and copyrighted. I had to spend all this money. So now I'm selling it to them, but I wasn't trying to do that. But let me just be honest with you. What they're creating, even though it's two years behind, it will not do this. What they're going to, whenever they get it up, it's going to show you charts and graphs. That's all it's going to do. It's not yeah. going to, this is for a practitioner. I'm yes. going to tell you. This is, this is for attorneys and judges to use. It's not for the lay people. You probably won't understand this, but attorneys understand this quite well. And by the way, it has saved the, the first person that saved was a white male who they were trying to give 10 years in prison. He got a youthful offender sentence, uh, two years as a youthful offender, two years community control, two years probation. The second person that saved was a Hispanic male. They were trying to give him 10 years in prison for a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon because he was found not guilty of a second degree murder charge. The only reason for which he possessed the weapon was to defend himself. And they still arrested him for that. And once, But once the prosecutor saw the data that the average sentence was 18 months, he threw up his hands and gave the guy 18 months as opposed to 10 years. A white female, they were trying to give her in the first circuit last year, they were trying to give her 35 years in prison on a racketeering charge. The judge, who was very experienced, had never given anybody over 12 years. I ran the data on that case myself, sent it to the private lawyer. Mm -hmm. And when he gave the judge the data, the judge gave the lady seven years instead of the 35 years that the prosecutor wanted. That case in and of itself saved the taxpayers $600,000. So from the six cases that we have, or the five cases that we have on the website, by the way, the website is technologiesforjustice.com. Everything spelled out, technologiesforjustice.com. Oh, so yes, technologies for F O R J U S T I C E dot C O M, technologiesforjustice.com. If you go to the uh, ESAS success page, it'll show you that five cases that we highlight say the taxpayers $1.1 million. Not only is it saving mm -hmm. time in prison, it's saving taxpayers money because it costs $21,400 a year to house a prisoner. So for every year right. that this, this, knock, this, this software knocks off, it knocks off $21,000. Right. Let me have a minute because there we're not receiving any call-ins. There are people that are viewing. I want to give a shout out to Tampa Candy Lowe, who has the Black Business Bus Store tour she also has a tea and conversation and i think there's going to be one in the next couple of weeks it's the place to go to hear of uh about current issues um impacting the system and, and other issues but she um commented and a shout out and a good evening to uh, miss candy Lowe. 
change mm-hmm. of laws are needed. So definitely, what but, can be done? We, 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 listen, we already have this system available. What does the public need to do to make sure that the state, throughout the whole state, public defenders, that mm-hmm. the powers that be get on board with this ASAP? Yes. As of yesterday, because while we're talking about it, there are sentences that are pending and we can they can start doing these comparisons. What do we need to do? Wait, before that, I want to address this and, and I want to hear that too, Attorney Barlow, but the, the saying a change of laws are needed, the issue is with the laws that we currently have, even if we were to change laws, if folks and judges aren't informed as to how to administrate the laws through sentencing, you're Correct. still going to have that same issue. So, Correct. So this is what we are dealing with. We're dealing with how to effectively administrate the laws, whether it's changed or not, how do we effectively administrate? So yes, I want to hear from you, Attorney Barlow, as to, um, I, I want to also appeal to every legislator out there, including our governor. I want to appeal to our governor because the bottom line is Florida is better when we treat everybody with respect. It doesn't sure. matter what race or socioeconomic background, etc. cetera. So um, what are, what are the public defenders as well? How do you, how are you getting into the front door for people to say, hey, this is a product that I have? Well, what, what I've been doing, quite frankly, is I have all of their, e- all the elected PDs, I have their emails. So I've been sending them emails for the last two years. One of them told me to not send him any more emails. So I deleted him. Can you believe that? And I'm only, only thing I'm doing is sending them information every well, time. Are you I'm willing like, to say who, who that is or no? Yeah, uh, the one in the first circuit. I can't think of his name. The public. It's fine though. You go ahead and you continue he, talking. I'm gonna look him up. Yeah, he just got re- he just got reelected without opposition. Uh, the one in the first circuit. So I don't mind. I mean, you know. But anyway, to answer your question specifically, uh, I've contacted all of them, and um, uh, unfortunately, only five offices have adopted the system. But this is the wave of the future. It's just a matter of time before, I mean, it's just a matter of time. You know, you can resist all you want to, but it's just a matter of time because judges love it. They love it because they know it'll show them what they're about to do before they do it. And they've never been able to do that before. And so, but as far as what the public can do, you find out who your senator is. You find out who your state representative is. And you get on the phone, call their office. You send them emails. You send, I mean, Seriously, tell, telling them, look, the equity incentive, you can just use ESAS, E-S-A-S. They know what it is. Yes. Just say the ESAS system, we need it in the courtroom. Listen, I have offered, I have the email of every chief judge in the state of Florida. I've sent them emails. I've gotten not one response. Mm-hmm. I'm not going after them. I'm just being honest with you. So I have offered this to every chief judge as a pilot. They could pick what judge they want. They can pilot it. We'll give it to them for free for 30 days. Show them how to use it or the JAs or paralegals or attorneys. Mm-hmm. I've contacted every state attorney office. I've sent an email to the, the state attorney's organization telling them we will let each state attorney office use it for free. We have trained. I'm not going to tell you which office it was. The one office let us train up all of their division chiefs on how to use it. We let them use it. Well, we let them have access to it for 45 days. Not one of them used it in all that time. I don't know why, but they need to be called out on it, period, point blank. Agreed. Agreed. We we, we have to be individuals that are not just talking, and I'm specifically talking to those in leadership in the state of Florida. Enough of just talking and, and, and having platforms and then when just because maybe it's because attorney Barlow, they don't know you. In other words, you're, you know, you're not no, a no, face no. That, they, that they recognize. Um, All right. Oh, wait, hold, on, hold, at- hold on just one second, because we have I want the public engagement. I do yeah. hold that thought. I want you to as soon as I'm done for you to, to finish that up, um, yep. Nina, a shout out to Walter L. Smith, the second. Um, I'd love to have this gentleman on my show as well so that we can get this information out to the public. Thank you, Walter, for that. We appreciate uh, that. Um, You're you're with good work and with justice. I believe that that's uh, Walter's heart. And so I am so happy to see him uh, Mm -hmm. chiming in and uh, giving you that opportunity, uh, Attorney Barlow. Not we have not one caller, not one. 
not yet. I don't. I'm amazed. I am amazed. Well, you know what? You know, it's 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 what is it? It's Thursday. People are getting out of work. This is going to be after we're done with the live broadcast. Uh, look it'll, at it. it yeah. It'll stay on yeah. as a pre-record. Um, so where can people contact you that will see That's, it a, yeah. as a pre-record and reach out to you? We already have. Listen, you have two powerhouses. Candy Lowe, she's a, an amazing community uh, uh, leader in the Tampa Bay area. Um, she's going to get the word out, I'm, I'm sure. Walter Smith, there goes another one. He's already invited you on the show. So this is the start of trying to disseminate the right. information. Yep. And, right. I, and I'll let the public know that Bruce A. Miller, he's the public defender um, for the first circuit. of. There's 20 circuits in Tampa, five in public Florida. defenders. In Florida, 20 in Florida. Did I did I say something different? I apologize. He said it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for correcting me. Uh, 20 in the state of Florida. Five already have gotten with the program, mm -hmm. and so for that they deserve. We commend them. Yes. We commend them for that. Yes, very much. Um, and the other 15, the other stragglers, or who you know, some of them interesting. I'm going to just weigh in. Some of them like to pander. So as soon as there were protests and marches post George Floyd. They did their little marches, which is good. That's great. But And then they were per protesting, marching under the banner that Black Lives Matter, yet they're not getting with the program. It, it's a, it's, it's, and, I, and I communicated with Bob Dillinger of the Sixth Circuit, and I, the day of that it was reported by the Tampa Bay Times that there was a march, or there was going to be a march, or they had report, after they had reported it, I said, you know, what's with the whole Black Lives Matter? Why aren't you with ESA? So I've given him an opportunity to come on live. Bob Dillinger, who's on his way to retirement, God bless him with that. And so I'm going to be following up with his successor, Sarah Mola, who I love. I've worked with her. She's good people, salt of the earth. Very excited that she's going to uh, assume office uh, come January. But mm -hmm. until there's something comparable to this that can do this, I want to know why not everyone is on board. I agree. I, I also want to know, because I believe, too, Haiti and Attorney Barlow, if there's a push from the legislators, okay, everybody who's running for a legislative position in the House, uh, whatever races they are, House or Senate, whatever races they're on, they should know about this. We've got to inform them. And just figure out a way because I believe the more Attorney Barlow gets talked about, the more his face is seen, the momentum will build. This is a phenomenal system, and it—I mean—it will bring justice to the state, and that's what we need. My being specifically uh, have experiential knowledge about an um, um, inequality in sentencing, and specifically about a client of mine who. Um, was uh, African-American clients. And so we understand the whole idea about the school to prison pipeline and that whole situation. Can, can you all still see that screen that I have up? I can. I think Haiti's going to pop back on. Something might have happened with her, but I can see it. So we can okay. definitely move forward. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a statistical analysis. If I'm still logged in, I might might have gotten logged out. Uh, okay. Let me see. Uh, now, here's a, can you see those stats yet? I'm back. Yep, I see you. Um, okay. okay, now watch this right here. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. This, this. this is the average sentence that was given out for that charge at that point level when my client got sentenced on January 6th of 2011. Look at it. The average maximum years was eight. The average was 7.9. The median was eight years. That's what the average was. Now, had I been able to show the judge this, my client would not have gotten. I'm positive. I know the judge. He's not a racist. He was just he just had a lack of knowledge. That's all. He had a lack of experience and a lack of knowledge. And that's one of the reasons that judges like this. Let me let me tell you what's so what's so powerful about a system like this. This system can take a brand new judge who just got on the bench, never had a criminal case before, yet they have access to the sentences that have been handed down by seasoned judges, seasoned judges who've been on the bench 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. They can look at what they've given people. And then that's why we call it sentencing precedent, 
sent, I had to coin this phrase. So every time you know you come up with something new, you have to have new phraseology. So awesome. the phrase sentencing precedent. So right. the lawyers that are trained are now we have a we have a CLE that we give lawyers. It's a two point oh hour CLE, one hour for um, technology training and one hour for bias elimination. If you purchase the system, we uh, train you up. And you get that credit as well. So every PD office, we train their lawyers. And so I, the average sentence when my client got sentenced was eight years. Now I'm gonna show you what it ha what happened once he got sentenced. I'm gonna run a different story study. Now I'm gonna go uh, search. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna change this and go back to after my client got sentenced. Was my client got sentenced in January of 2011. So I'm gonna go to January uh, 25th. 2011 and I'm gonna run this same search and I'm gonna show you the difference of what happened back then uh, so now 17 cases came up and I have to do a little bit of work here once this comes up so I'm going to remove everything that's not like my client's case which was I got to remove that now we can go to apple and apple and orange to orange now uh i'm gonna go to duval county again is that duval county only yes so i'm gonna sort the years here you see the difference that's my client right there 15 years you see that my client got 50 nobody else yes mm -hmm. 15 years everybody is similarly situated look at that county jail six months county jail to 15 years on the same offense, same type of charge. Now I'm gonna do a statistical analysis to show you the difference. Now, maximum year, see how that stretched the data? It stretched the data out, out of the box. So now the, the maximum is 15 years, the average is that, and the median is that. So my client's case stretched the data. So the good thing about ESAS is it will show a judge what they're about to do before they do it. And I love that because it's an excuse eliminator. Right now, a judge can say, well, I didn't know what other people got in my courtroom 10 years ago. The courtrooms, you know, down the hall. That's right. That's right. They, can, they can say that now. Well, once you get this system, nobody mm -hmm. can say that. You mm -hmm. can't say that anymore. So it's an excuse eliminator. That's why I really like it. It makes it's, everyone intelligent, though. Think about yeah. it. That it puts everybody on the same page. And, and I'll just be honest with you. There are some good prosecutors. I mentioned one when they see what they're about to do, they change their minds. There are some good judges when they see what they're about to do, they change their minds because this system. Listen, judges are very intelligent. They know that if a prosecutor is trying to get them to give somebody 35 years like that case I told you about, yet the average sentence is between seven and 12, they know that that prosecutor can get them in trouble with a paper like the Sarasota Herald Tribune if somebody writes a story on it. So judges right. are very, very conscious of their careers. And so if they see data like this, they're going to be forced to do what's right. And that's what you want. And so this is a policy decision that can be made. The Florida legislature can create a law that says every judge has to use a system. Doesn't have to be ours. It just so happens that ours is the only one that's in existence right now. Doesn't have to be this one, but something like it. And if they they could make a law that every judge has to use this before at least look at it. Now it doesn't make a judge do anything. What it does is it educates them, like you just said. It empowers them to know better about what to do and most importantly what not to do and then the last thing it does is it gives the public more confidence because everybody is treated the same fairness isn't that what we're supposed to be about fairness justice right. exactly and it doesn't right. under, it isn't a lot of times we're told as even as attorneys be careful with what you say because you don't want to undermine confidence in the system well you know what that's what we want to foster, confidence in the system. That well, You'll have a, a, a people, a public, a community that respects the system if the system does what it's supposed to do. And when they're turning a blind eye to an, a, a system that exists in order to combat what we know exists, disparate sentencing, because there's implicit bias, then if you're not jumping on board with what we do have right now while we await 
to what our lawmakers promised us in 2018, something's a matter. And, yeah. and, and you're going to have the public distrust, especially when they live it. They see someone that they love uh, possibly being subject to an unjust sentence. This, Listen, what yeah. Attorney Barlow has, is data. <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants data. I mean, come on now. It's data. Yeah. Data, data, whatever you want to call it, right? <laughs> it's both. It is, it right, is, right. It is a qualifier here. So, I mean, this is phenomenal. I mean, imagine if we had had that when we were practicing, or I was practicing years ago, Haiti. I mean, come on. Um, this is phenomenal. It really, really is. It, it's I, I mean, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. brainer. It really is a no brainer. Um, okay, so know. we do have a call. Perfect. We have a call and um, good evening, community activist Michelle Williams. You're on the air. Hey, thank you so much, uh, uh, Attorney Haiti Odafesa. Mr. Barlow, my pleasure again. I, you are like the look, I'm putting you up in the status of the, the black marvel for us. Thank you so much. <laughs> God gave you this creativity to create this system. Lord knows in heaven we've been needing this. And Attorney Haiti, I haven't met you personally yet, but it's so nice to meet you and have you on and, and to see the support that, you know, the momentum, the teeth that this, um, this data is, is you know, um, this program is starting to have. Mm -hmm. And you know, I got to ask Mr. Barlow, me as an activist, <laughs> I know you can't sell you're not gonna sell me the program yet, because I would do some damage to it. I'd be just like a little look taking all night long. But how yeah. can I, with my followers, my fan base, and my social media presence, how can I continue to help you? I mean, this is shared on my page and, and trust me it's gonna be viewed, you know, because my, my prime time hours are between eight PM and three AM that people go and look at things on my page. And right. so I'm, I'm happy that um, Haiti is having this, but how can I continue to help you, you know, spread the word, you know, something that we always, Haiti and I always talk about, you know what I'm saying, the racial disparities inside the courtroom and the systematic, the, the systemic racism, I'm sorry, you know, that that happens. And you like you say, you know, if this judge has a program in front of them, he or she can't say, oh, no, I didn't know. No, you had it right in front of you what John Blow got. And what Pookie was finna get, you know what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't I shall not tell a lie, as George Washington say, you know, don't be on those bench no more, because they have, right. you know what I'm saying, they'll have this, this, this program. And, and, and I just want to know, what can I do to continue to help you with this? And I'll first hang up all, and let you listen. Thank okay. you for calling in, thank Michelle. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. Uh, first thing you can do is use all the gifts and talents that God has given you and the platforms that you have at your disposal. Just use them like you like you're already doing. And then I'll just ask you to do this right here. And it'll work uh, tonight. Just pray, asking for a word of wisdom. That's in Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Ask God for a word of wisdom on how you know you should go about it, and He'll tell you exactly what you need to do, and it'll, it'll knock. It'll be a grand slam, just like that. So I would just ask people. You know, we know people. We have you know spheres of influence. Just use your spheres of influence, your social media pages. The people at your church, people at your work, you know, you know people that well, you socialize well, with, your What political. about contact, contacting your local lawmaker, huh? Your representative. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was getting there. That's what I was oh, getting sorry. to. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and see, a lot of people have not done that. Um, and some of them have for different reasons. But it, it, it would be good to look up your representatives and contact them. I mean, they like that. They really do. And when they get enough calls, and or emails about this particular program, they'll start understanding how serious it is and they'll start paying attention to it. Um, Cause I've been very, very patient with this. I've been working on this since December, 2016. Wow. I've flown, flown to Washington DC with this. I met with uh, Bill, Senator Bill Nelson's attorney. They loved it, but he lost the election. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I've been working on this thing for a long time. And uh, I- Have you spoken to our other two senators? Who who I spoken uh, to the U.S. senators? Have you had a chance to speak no, to our other two no, U.S. senators? No, okay. no, no, not the U.S. No, no, not at all. Okay. Um, I had a connection who had a connection with uh, Bell Nelson's office, and so I flew up there and made a, a demo to the lawyer who was working for him, and uh, it just blew her away. Mm -hmm. But I'm um, he lost the election, so. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but a lot of lawmakers know it. I'll, I'll uh, make available. Uh, last time I made a presentation was in December. I made it before the Senate Criminal Justice Committee, and I offered it to him again. One of the representatives, his name is, uh, no, Senator Pizzo from Miami invited me to his office. I did a personal demo for him. It blew him away. He's a former prosecutor. He was excited. He asked me if I wanted to meet Senator Brandis. I said, yes, you know, we can sit down and talk about a pilot. He wanted to do a pilot. The man never followed back up with me. Never. What, <laughs> what, what number can the public reach you at? Other than uh, Technologies for Justice. Yeah, 855-845-3727. Option Repeat one. that. 855-845-3727, option one. I'm putting that in the uh, chat section. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also go to the website. Uh, you can contact me through the website as well. Technologies for for justice.com. And I'm some good information, in the... good information on that website is articles that have been written by the Florida Bar. By the way, speaking of the Florida Bar, the Florida Bar, believe it or not, has endorsed this. Attorneys, awesome. all, all Florida Bar attorneys are, get a 10% discount for this service if they purchase it. I just sold one to a lawyer today. Um, and also, he bought three circuits, as a matter of fact. Also, the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Attorneys, that's the premier criminal defense bar in Florida, over 1,600 professional attorneys have been practicing a lot of them long time. Some of them are former judges. They've endorsed it, and they yep. get an extra 5% for a total of 15%. So if the Florida bar, think about this for a second. The Florida bar endorsed this. Just let that sink in. What's the problem with the Florida legislature? Right. And I've used the system a couple of times. And so I want to ask you about... We're doing our part to get the information out there so that every attorney knows that this exists. But for those attorneys who knows who know that it exists and doesn't make use of it when their client is uh, the government is seeking prison time and they don't run a report, is, could that be an issue? Is that an issue? Let's talk about that. It is an issue. It's malpractice. Number one, it's malpractice. Mm -hmm. It is. If you have this date now, now if you don't have the system. You will. You, you, you're ignorant. You don't know. Yeah, you, right. you cannot be held accountable. Right. But if you have the system, you're facing two problems. Number one is malpractice. Number two is also ineffective assistance of counsel. Because, listen, the ABA has a model rule that says that before you sentence anyone, they suggest highly recommend that, you know, the sentencing trends of the jurisdiction. Addiction. That means you need to know how the judge that's in front of you or you're in front right. of with your is sentencing. Well, the only way you can know that is to go to the courthouse and spend about a year looking at all of their sentences or to get this program right here and pull it up in about five seconds. Right. Yep. So, so it's, it's a real it's big problem. It's, mm -hmm. it's important also for the public that is viewing and that will eventually view this because good people will do their part, mm -hmm. even as small a part in just sharing this and making sure that this information gets out there so that people do know for the public, family members, loved ones, friends, whomever, that they know if they know someone that's in Florida right. is awaiting um, the, the, the outcome of a criminal case and the government is seeking prison sentence that they can say, listen, you need to let your attorney know that this software exists, this database, and it would be... Um, it's crucial that a report is run, a comparison is done. Right. Let me, let me say one more thing before I forget. It. It's very, very important. You know, some of the I get letters from prisons all the time. They have access to the internet, so they 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 watched me when I made a presentation at on the Sunshine Network in uh at the Senate last December. So I get a lot of emails from prison. I mean, letters from prisoners and, and emails from their parents and loved ones, wives, husbands, and all that. One of the saddest cases I, I looked at was a gentleman who was sentenced to 20 years for trafficking in heroin mm -hmm. on a plea, on a plea. And he was running into people who had the same charge that he had, same points and everything. They got four years in prison. Yeah. It's sad. I mean, and for nothing, for apps. And, and I'm thinking to myself, why in the world do you plead somebody to 20 years and they're only facing wow. 30? You go to trial on that one. You go to trial on it. So I'm just be honest with you. Yeah, we do have some aggressive prosecutors. Yes, we do have some judges who could be doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. But we also have some unproductive criminal defense attorneys 
who are not doing their jobs and they're a part of the problem too. I'm just mm -hmm. being honest. Mm. They don't get called out much, but I have to call them out because I'm running into cases where I'm, I'm looking at, look, all you had to do was a little bit of work yeah. and this person would have gotten off, period let alone 20, 30 years in prison. Wow. So a lot of times it's us not doing our jobs for people. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, 7.05. We're going to be wrapping up. Um, it was an awesome presentation, I must Fantastic, say. Fantastic, Attorney Barlow. Really yes, appreciate it, it. Thank you so much. Uh, yep. Is there any other anything else you may want to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I just want to say this right here for everybody who is listening to this now and may listen later. Listen, don't wait until your butt gets in a sling to get involved in this. I guarantee you sooner or later, the way things work, this system is good for everybody. It saves right. white, blacks, Hispanics, men, women. And let me yes. just say this right here. This is what I find when I look at this data. I found cases where public defenders sometimes get better deals than private attorneys. I've seen that a lot. The case I showed you on, on my situation, that was a public defender's case that got eight years. I'm a private attorney in the just 15, 15 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this system will help everybody. Everybody. You yeah, know what? And, yeah. and, and I want to say this in response to that point that you just made. A lot mm -hmm. of times people, I was a public defender for nearly seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're attorneys. Sometimes they're called right. uh, terms that are meant to denigrate. Oh. Right. And you know what? When they call me, they say, should I get a private attorney? And I, I, I say, well, you know, if you're with a public defender and you can't hire a private attorney, there are good, better public. There are some attorneys that are public defenders that I would say in comparison to skill and experience and what they do and how I see their work ethic and their, right. their, their, their zealousness in comparison to some. Some private attorneys, let's just face it, they're about the money. That's right. That's yeah, right. they're about the money. Yeah. So, right. so right. we're. Not, I'm not gonna be on board with bashing persons that are committed when they can, make, in some cases, be making more money in, in right. the in the private sector, and they decide to stay there in the trenches to where right. to, right. to because they love justice mm -hmm. more than they love money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. some private attorneys, be careful with who you pay. Uh, some of these private attorneys charge a lot of money. That's true. That's true. And so. <laughs> Tell me who, which attorney you're inquiring about and don't make generalizations. Well, should the, the public defender private? No, an attorney is is good based on what can be seen as to what they do. Let, let me put a footnote on what you just said. I was at a panel discussion at a college uh, two years ago in Jacksonville, and we had a senior federal district court judge, life appointment, who mm -hmm. used to be a PD a long time ago. And he told the audience about 400 people in our he said, if I ever got arrested, I would use the office of the public defender. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. A federal judge said that because he sees them every day. They're specialists. These people know their, their craft. The ones who've been around a long time, you right. can't beat them. They know the judges. They know the system. They know the law. And so a lot of them are excellent attorneys. However, like with anything else, some of them are not necessarily on their game like they could be. And this is why. The, the, the public defender should get this system. This is a no brainer. Every public defender in this state should have this system. This brings justice to the state of Florida. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I'm amazed. I have to say that, but I agree with you, attorney uh, Barlow and that this is the trend. So if they're not getting on board now, they will in the near future because yeah. I believe pressure is going to come upon them from folks like us, us from, from other folks from the uh, who have social media accounts and have platforms where they speak. We all need to speak up about this. What we're saying is everybody can be on the same playing field. We can all have the same knowledge and then everyone can get what is their due. That's it. Exactly. exactly. Nothing more, nothing, nothing less. More, nothing less. That is correct. Okay, that is so right. So, We're gonna so wrap can I up. Say one more thing. Can okay, I say okay, one go. more thing? Yes. And you know, there's a little bit of for the people who are not in church or not in God. There's a little bit of poetic justice that I want to share with you. We call it that which a man sows, he shall also reap. Back mm -hmm. in 2017, I sent uh, Representative Chris Sprawls an email detailing what ESAS was. 
specifically, I mean, very specific. I still have the email. I shared it. Um, the man never responded, never replied. But months later, I heard about a bill that he was sponsoring. And when I read that bill, it was like deja vu. A lot of the things that I sent to him in that email, they were dealing with in that bill. And here's what put the nail in the coffin. When I was in Tampa for that criminal justice summit, um, th that bill basically said they wanted a company, not that we would have wanted to bid for the work, we wouldn't have wanted it, but they crafted that bill to make sure that technology for justice couldn't bid for that job. Wow. The legislation said they were looking for a national nonprofit. Well, our corporation is local and it's for profit to do that work. And so the, the company that got it is out of New York, Measures for Justice. So when the lady is talking about uh, the program that they're creating, this is what she said in Tampa at that meeting. She said, you know, you all have strange laws in Florida. It's almost like this bill was drafted for us to get the contract. And I'm thinking to myself, that's exactly what it was. So now what we have, now what we have is they turned me down because I was a nobody. But look, what God has done is he's given us a system that's already working, already saving taxpayers money. And that stuff that they're trying to create is not even off the ground yet. Mm. And so just ask yourself, there's yep. a lot of. See you there. Criminal justice reform. And so it, it looks good for PR, right? Right. Uh, right. To, to, right. to talk to talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to see how I was told. Chris Prowse told me that this was going to be up and running soon. I'm going to. If, if well, now, you know, you heard from attorney Barlow, even if it is up and running soon, it's not even effective. And it's exactly, it's exactly. from another, it's from a national company and the investment, what investment do they have into the, in the state of Florida? I mean, you have worked here, <laughs> attorney Barlow. We all have worked here. We understand how the system works here, how the laws work here, okay? You well, know what? They, they were looking for headlines. You know, the New York, the per, one of the persons who work at Measures for Justice wrote an op-ed for the New York Times and they posted, uh, posted it. So, you know, they're looking for, you know, kudos and publicity and all that. Like I said, I've been working on this since December of 2016, behind the scene, whatever it takes, you mm -hmm. know, I'm willing to do it. Since we're on a scriptural tip, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Yes. Right. Love yes. your neighbor Absolutely. as you love yourself, because that is the fulfillment of the law. Loving God with all your heart, soul mm -hmm. and mind and your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't even matter if you have some a loved one currently, somebody that, you know, there are people that are going to suffer a, 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 an injustice in, in and of itself. It's, if there's no equality under our Constitution, right. there has to that's part of our Constitution. That's equality. Correct. Right. So if we don't do anything, if we don't try to be the tr town crier to say this is available why is not then it's on us it's on us right. to make sure that not one person suffers an an unfair sentence that's right that's right Katie Oropesa for Florida you judge thanks for tuning in please share get the word out you will do your civic part right. in and, and contribute to justice, to criminal justice re reform. If you can do nothing more than to spread the word and share this, you would have done something to That's push right. this forward. That's Thank right. you, Attorney Barlow. Yes. Always a pleasure Thank to you. collaborate oh. with you. You're yes. awesome. I'm not going to give up until something, if not this, something like this. And if it's this, then yes, we need this. I'm not going to stop until this, this is yeah. a fulfillment. Yeah. God yes. is awesome and he's all over this program. So I'm I'm confident that it's just that. a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It. I believe that. Attorney and Bob. Nina, you're a yes. you're you're a wonderful co-host. Yes. I, I love you, Nina. Amen. We have she, a good she job, just, Devin. She just had a um <laughs> we do, we do on and off the broadcast. That's so, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was your birthday yesterday. That's happy right. Happy birthday to you. Okay. You so yeah, happy birthday. Good Thank evening, you. everyone. Okay. Um, enjoy your families, your loved ones tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Diodo Pesa for Florida, you judge, and good night.